Hi, welcome back. So, I thought we would talk about the processor cabinet to begin with. This being kind of the exciting part of the system. So, the front of the cabinet is missing its door. You know, this has this beautiful wavy door. Normally the processing cabinet has a similar door, but it has a silver pendant that runs down the center of the door, has a couple of lights on it. Mine didn't come with the door. Um, the system's face has the CCU, the central control unit. This is the outlet for the fans that blow up through the system. This is the back of the back plane. The processors and memory boards are on the far side. And down the bottom here we have the, well this is actually a pocket for manuals and then the bottom of the power supplies. So I thought we'd start at the bottom and uh, start with the power supplies. We have some lights here showing status of the three power supplies. The unit is 220 volt single phase. So too hot, not three phase thankfully, which means I can run it. It produces 48 volts, which is the system bus voltage. And behind this uh, filter screen here, We have the three supplies. Now, I don't know if uh, any of these look familiar to you. They may or may not. Pioneer Magnetics. Pioneer Magnetics. So this supply comes from an E10000, this supply comes from a Cray J90, and they are, as far as I can tell, 100% identical. They're not supposed to be, supposedly they're different, but they have the same model numbers, and they have the exact same pins. So, I believe that if this is 100% identical, I have an awful lot of spare power supplies for Cray J90s, which is definitely good news. So here we have the CCU, the central control unit, and behind this panel here there's actually a small computer, which hopefully still works. This panel here gives you status and control over the entire unit. So we'll start with, obviously, a system ready lamp. When the system is first powered on, this is the lamp that tells you that it is ready to go. It will be uh, in a state that can boot. We have fault lights for the processor cabinet, fault lights for the I.O. cabinet. We have status lights and fault lights for the memory boards, for memory boards, for processor boards, again. This is a J916 chassis, so four processor boards. And then the clock module. We have the master resets. We have the alarm acknowledge. If it goes over temperature, if a blower fails, if the power supplies begin to fail, master alarm will go off. This will silence the alarm. We've got an alarm and a light fault test. The master power off button. Uh, I believe this should trip the master breakers that uh, kick over the power supplies. We have voltage margin on the internal bus, the DC-DC voltage conversion from the 48 system volts to the 3.3 and the 5 volts of the system. Enable and inhibit of the 3.35 volt DC-DC converter, 48 volt system bus, enable and inhibit, turn the alarm on and off, and then the system controls local for the SWS remote for remote control head. Um, I'm not certain about how the controls work, but I know that it should be local for the way the system is configured. Behind this panel is the back plane, which we can pop off like so. Now the difference between the 98 and the 916, as I said, is the number of processors aboard. The 932 is a much larger system. In fact, its cabinet is twice as deep as this, and it has a double-ended 
back plane, it becomes a center plane, much like in the ET 1000. And so you have boards coming at the front, boards going out the back. So here, the back plane, we have our massive aluminium stiffeners. We've got our power bus bars here, some smoothing capacitors underneath, power supply control lines. Here we have, it's a little DB25 module. I'm sorry, it's a DB50 module, DD50. And this actually tells the system how it is configured. The system can have, in my case, it's an eight processor J916. And so this little module here tells it how many processors it's got in it. And my understanding of how it works is the center line here there is a resistor between the outer lines and that enables the first processor, next lines the second processor, third, fourth, and so on. This should be configured for a J98, so I should be good with this. On the inside here, you can see another circuit board. This is the clock board. This generates the master clock for signal for the entire system. I think my favorite part about here, aside from these wonderful big aluminum bars is the Cray logo, because most of the Cray stickers in here are hiding behind panels, and because I don't have the big door with the Cray logo on it, and this was the first big sticker I saw. So here we have the side of the unit. You can see that uh, the iOS cabinet is open on the side as well, so the outer sides have covers, the inner sides, they latch together, and the iOS cabinet actually fits. This sort of rim here fits slightly inside, the um, processor cabinet so they clip together. So the major components are, if we start at the bottom, this is where the power supply slot in. We've got the power supply cabling and then the sequencing cabling that runs up and down to the central control unit, which is up here. This is the AC input box here with the big heavy AC cables. In here is the fan intake and it's got one very large centrifugal squirrel cage style fan that blows air upwards and then out. So this box here is the air exhaust, comes out the front. And then in here is the actual processor and memory board cabinet. The back plane is about here. We have the rear of the unit. So we've got our air intake down the bottom, power supply inputs down below. We have the processor memory boards. This is the fan exhaust. It has a whole bunch of these little uh, hooks here are for cable tying. Cables too that come in from the iOS cabinet because all the cabling comes in between the two cabinets and then drapes down to the back of the processor boards. And then the CC is up here. So we have eight slots. The outer two slots are for memory boards and then the inner four slots are for processor boards. And you can see that they have cable ends on them or connectors. This is for the Y1 cable, which is the high-speed parallel cable that goes between the iOS and the processors. So I've popped a processor board out so we can take a closer look. We've got our Y1 cable ends here. And these honking great big uh, screws here run through to the back. And this is what ratchets the board into the system. Because of its size and weight, each of these boards is maybe 50 pounds you can get them on an angle to the chassis and they get stuck and some of the modules are stuck one of my challenges is i'm not 100 percent certain that all of the modules are completely seated so i'm hoping they are um, but this is not great engineering we have the enable inhibit switch here green for enable black for inhibit so this will enable or inhibit the board so when it's green board will be on black it's cut off from the system on the rear we have this monstrous connector here the uh, threaded screws on the ratchets and then the primary power pins right here so I've laid it on its side and undone all of the screws. This is the back side of the board. We'll pop off the cover here. And we have the Y1 mezzanine board, 
my belief is that the Y1s depend on not the processor board, but how many iOS boards you have. That is my belief, I'm not confirmed on that. This here, Super Power, gives the hint. This is the DC-DC converter board. This brings the 48 volts down to the 5.5 and the 3.3 that the actual system uses. You can see our inhibit line goes straight to this power board. So we have the second Y1 board here. We've got a couple of big fat ASICs. I suspect these are bus adapters. And then the actual processor board here. And that's about all that I can say about it because I don't know what I'm looking at. Uh, beyond a few heat sinks, of course. There is a connector here so the mezzanine boards can be disconnected. I believe this is in order that you can upgrade the CPU boards. Uh, so, as said, as you're aware, this is a Cray J90. The Cray SV1 is basically a highly uprated J90 series. So, I suspect that this was designed with that sort of thing in mind that you could undo these two big torque screws, drop the uh, CPU module, add a higher rated one on. Memory board is more of the same. Similar cover. Not going to bother showing you the uh, underside. We have some more ICs here that look suspicious like processor ICs. However, under a lover, lovely cover to uh, keep air channeled through here, we have these beautiful long boards here each of which appears to be soldered directly to this backplane board here. And uh, these IBM chips here are also labeled Cray Research Inc. Not entirely certain what I'm looking at here either. Um, parity control possibly. Um, maybe some kind of caching, snooping lookup stuff. Not certain. And then are these bus controllers, um, or more of the same? Uh, do they do some kind of quick lookup table? Not certain. I'm guessing this is a test connector. It's very pretty, I'll give him that. Lots of memory boards, lots of memory chips. I think last thing, we can take a look at putting these boards back in, because that has its own challenges as well. So I'm returning the uh, processor board and the memory board to the cage here. And uh, as we've said, the air comes up through the boards and then is exhausted out the top. There are these little wee flipper diddles here, and you can see they're latched up on these two boards and down on these. This is a banking slot, and this I have no blanking plate for right now. On the inside here, you can just see a weighted flap that opens up. So when there is no board present, this flap is held down, and so the air is concentrated through the slots that have boards in them. This is very clever, however, it makes inserting boards kind of a pain in the butt. We can see our little flipper diddles here. And so to install a board, we have to slot it in, bring the flipper diddle up, try not to capture our fingers, at which point this little uh, tab here will hold the flipper diddle in place. And then we have to crank these bloody connectors in and hope they grab and hope that it, see it's sliding in, doesn't wind off because these giant knobs here, some of which are a bit beat to hell, this one for example, can wind off. So you have to hope that it gets seated, and that there's not enough friction, the anything's going to get stuck and latches in. 
Something like that, hopefully. I don't know what too much is. God, I hope that's seated properly. Well, I think that's enough for this video. And uh, I think next time we'll have a go at the IRS cabinet. If you have been, thank you so very much for watching. And I hope you guys have a good day. Bye-bye.